There's no funny introduction today because I'm in a hurry to get dis going. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's move on. From I Will Survive to Staying Alive, most everybody has either listened, danced, or shopped for groceries to a disco song during their lifetime. And if you lived during the late 1970s, there's a good chance you did all three because disco was king. At the height of its popularity in 1979, disco was a four billion dollar industry that dominated music charts and airwaves across America. Everyone from ABBA to Frank Sinatra had boarded the disco hype train and the toe-tapping music was essentially inescapable. The rise of disco was so rapid that to many it seemed as if it just came out of thin air, but where exactly did disco come from? Well, first of all, the word disco comes from the French discothèque, a combination of the words disc, meaning record, and bibliothèque, meaning library. And one of the first music libraries in America, Le Club, opened in New York City in 1960. It maintained the exclusivity of Parisian discotheques by charging extremely high prices. But soon, however, the listening library discotheque lost its popularity, and a different kind of disco came onto the scene. You see, while discotheques had seen their last days, black, Latino, and gay Americans were busy inventing an altogether new musical genre. Experimenting DJs made seamless song transitions a new creative art so that the party never stopped. Additionally, as the gay liberation movement was picking up steam, laws prohibiting men from dancing together were no longer enforced, which gave gay men new ways to socialize in public. The discotheque of the 1960s was slowly becoming the disco of the 1970s. And as disco grew in popularity, a more cohesive disco sound began to take shape, blending together the soul, funk, and salsa musical traditions of disco's most committed enjoyers, the black and Latino communities. But disco still had a few hurdles to clear before it could dance its way into the limelight. Initially, disco music didn't get much radio play. Major record labels weren't yet hip to its commercial potential. Everything would change in 1977, though, with the release of Saturday Night Fever and the opening of Studio 54. Saturday Night Fever, a film starring John Travolta, a white heterosexual actor, and featuring music from the Bee Gees, a white heterosexual band, made disco music appealing to a larger audience. Similarly, Studio 54, a New York City club, brought disco out of its former home of underground nightlife and into fashion with the rich and influential. With interest on the rise, radio stations played disco nonstop and the music skyrocketed in popularity the disco craze had finally begun. By the late 1970s then, disco had undergone quite the journey. What had started as an underground scene became massively mainstream. With the release of Saturday Night Fever and the opening of Studio 54, disco may have seemed on top of the world, but tensions remained simmering just beneath the surface. To find out how these tensions literally exploded and led to the downfall of disco, make sure to check out American Experience's new film, The War on Disco. It's a fascinating story that'll make you ask why. M-C-A. Woo!